Hi, this is Josh Wyden. Welcome to today's REI 360 training. Today, I want to talk about how to present a wholesale deal in the, you know, the perfect way to uh, get the most money and sell your properties really fast. So, first question we have, does a presentation really matter? This is really a good question. I mean, you know, maybe you've wholesaled some deals, maybe you haven't. I'm sure that if you're involved in real estate at all, you're probably on somebody's wholesale list and they send you out a, uh, a buyer's list every time, you know, uh, send it out an email every time they get another property. And I'll bet you've been in the situation where you're sitting at your desk, you're reading the email, the thing pops up, you open it up and you know, you're just confused almost with what's with the information as it's presented. You don't know what you're looking at and I'll bet you've turned down deals or passed over deals just because you didn't know what was there. I know I've been there and I've kicked myself because I've seen the email, I did something else that didn't look that promising and then I find out that a friend of mine or another business associate bought the property and made a ton of money and you know, I'm kicking myself. On the wholesaler's end, if he'd have done a, a better job presenting these deals, I probably would have paid a little bit more for the house. I certainly would have picked up the phone. The quality would have more options. So on a wholesaler's end, you know, does it matter? Presentation matter? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The goal with the presentation is to do a couple things. Number one, dumb it down, make it easy and, and grab their attention. Basically what we want to do is we want to condense, we want to, uh, this is not the greatest drawing, but the idea is condense their decision making process down into one or two numbers that they can easily glance at and say, oh, this is a good deal or, oh, this isn't for me. Very quickly. You want to be able to present that, um, you know, real quick. So let's talk about how we're going to do that. Step one is to provide the essence of the deal. What am I talking about? The essence is the underlying, they're the underlying principles or the overview. They're the numbers. You want to present this in such a way that if you were sitting at your desk and you opened up the email within half a second, you could know whether this is something you wanted to uh, learn more about or not. How do you do that? What, what we're going to present is the purchase price of the property, construction, after repair value or rental rate, depending on the type of exit strategy that you're proposing for the property. So if it's, you know, obviously you, they're uh, going to want to take a look at the rental rate. If it's a rental property, ARV, um, that's pretty much Im important for, um, you know, whether it's a rental or a resale, but it's much more important if it's a flip. So the essence that I'm talking about is we're going to provide this, these numbers, but we're going to be focusing on the return on investment or the profit. Okay. So if we're doing a, a rehab, I'm going to present all this information, but my title right at the top is going to be $50,000 profit. If it's a rental property, it's going to be 15% return on investment. That's your headline. You know, that's what's going to jump out. You want something that's going to grab the viewer's attention. That's the essence. And then from there, we give a, a little overview, purchase price, construction, ARV, rental rate, stuff like that. Okay. Boom. Step number one. Step number two. And maybe this should be step number one, but step number two is going to be make sure you have a deal for your buyer. First of all, it's got to be a deal. Second of all, it's got to be a deal for your buyer. Different buyers want different things, just like different investors. You know, you, you probably look for different investments yourself uh, and what might be good for you might not be good for someone else. So you need to know what they want and what they expect from an investment. If I'm a rental property investor, you know, maybe I'm looking for a certain return on investment in a certain neighborhood. Okay. If you, if somebody provides that to me, I'm going to be more apt to buy and buy a lot and buy quickly, you know? So you want to present this in such a way that, uh, or you want to present these properties to the people that are looking for them. If you've got somebody that's looking for flips, why would you send them an email or present them with a deal that's in a rental neighborhood? It doesn't make sense. You want to make sure that your investment matches the expectations and the, the criteria of the buyers that you're targeting. Next, um, you want to make sure that the deal meets their needs. And we just talked about that on, on the flip side, you know, um, <laughs> Well, not even the flip side. Lastly, you want to make sure that you're not pushing junk. I find so often, um, you know, I, I open up these emails from these wholesalers and actually let, let me even take a step back. I don't know if you've ever had this experience, but you'll be sitting there and you're doing your work and your phone rings and you pick up and you say, yes, uh, do you guys buy houses? 
and I get a call, I, get, I know it's a call from a new wholesaler. Usually it's because some guru came to town and pitched them on building a huge buyer's list and this and that and the other thing and how building the buyer's list is the most important part of wholesaling. And, and you know, the whole point of their conversation is to get my email, get me on a list so that then they can send out emails to properties that they get that usually they got from another wholesaler who is, you know, they put $5,000 on the deal and send it back out. And, you know, it, it, before you know it, I'm on you know, 50 different lists, I'm getting five different emails of the same property at five different prices and I'm ready to lose it. So nobody wants that. Not you, not me, and it doesn't do anybody any good. Make sure you're not pushing junk. If you have a good deal, people will buy from you. If you present it well, they'll buy for more money and more quickly. So step two, make sure you have a deal for your buyer. And step three, and this is where we're gonna spend a lot of our our time with the training is show your buyer how the deal meets their needs. Now, when I, I create these flyers to send out, uh, I'm, I'm talking electronic flyers, you can print out the flyers or whatever. I try to make their life, the, my buyer's life easy. If they like my headline, you know, if they like this essence of the deal, $50,000 profit. I want to create backup material or you know, backup references so that they can easily go review the data that supports my, my claim for the $50,000 profit, okay? So what's that mean? First, we're gonna do the, the work for them. We're gonna give them the easy access to the information. First, I, uh, I pull comps on the property and I provide them with a list of the comparable sales. If I tell them the, the ARV of the property is $200,000 and there's nothing to substantiate that number, it makes me look like a fool and makes them not interested. However, if I can present comps where I say, property's worth 200,000 and I can show, oh, there's five houses on the block that, or you know, in the neighborhood that sold for, in the last six months for between 200 and 220, that makes me look great because you know I, I'm just as up to say it's worth 220. You want to make sure that you're giving real comps. I'm talking about the same number of bedrooms and bathrooms, same neighborhoods, um, the same types of properties, same square footage generally. Uh, you can, you know, REI 360, you have a great tool with the e-comps tool where you can pull comps in any neighborhood all across the country. That's one of the tools, that's one of the, you know, supporting references that I use with my buyers. I'll show them, hey, I say it's worth 200,000, here's, an e-comps layout of all the properties that sold recently within you know a general vicinity and they're able to look at the same numbers I'm looking at. Next, real rehab numbers. If you tell me a property is gonna only cost $15,000 to do all of the repairs and you're gutting the thing down to the studs and rebuilding it, I'm gonna laugh in your face. I don't care if it's a one bedroom apartment or if it's a, uh, you know, a, a full house, 15 grand is not gonna get it done. You want to be able to present to them an honest, um, you know, presentation of what this is going to take to get the work done. What's that mean? That means knowing your construction figures. And if you're not comfortable with them, that's okay. But that's why we uh, provided the construction estimator, and um, you know, in the tool section of the of the site, so you can go in there and you can go itemized, room by room by room, item by item. And you can give a realistic expectation of what the construction costs may be. It might cost them a little bit more to do the work, or it might cost them a little bit less. But at the end of the day, they're going to respect your your um, you know your estimate because you're going to be able to provide them with an, uh, an itemized breakdown. It's something that you know this is supporting material again, just bolstering this claim of 15% return on investment, $50,000 profit, whatever whatever your essence is or your headline is when you're putting out these deals. Next, pictures and video. This is a great technology, you know, great age technologically. It's very simple with a, a cell phone to click pictures, a ton of pictures throughout the house, or um, to do a video walkthrough. I do a video walkthrough of every single property that I look at. I do it for two reasons. First reason is I want to remember what I looked at. You know, if I'm looking at a couple dozen properties on a, on a monthly basis, somebody calls me from two months ago, I'm able to pull up the video of the walkthrough that I did while I was at the property and comment on, um, you know, on, on specifics on the property. Likewise, once a property goes under contract, now I have an added, um, I don't know, an added nuance for my prospective buyer to take a look at. Hey, you wanna schedule an appointment? That's great. First, look at the video. 
If you don't like what you see in the video, there's no sense in scheduling an appointment to come out and see the property. So I'm providing them with as much info as we can, even to the point where they can feel like they're walking through the house with me, all right? And then lastly, I wanna provide a, a financial analysis. How did I come up with a $50,000 profit? Yeah, these are the overviews and supporting numbers, but let's make it detailed for them. If it's a rental property, I wanna be able to use, I'm gonna use the uh, rental profit, property analyzer so that I can show them these are the real ex expected expenses. Um, I, yes, I took into consideration vacancy rate, management costs, ongoing maintenance, um, taxes, insurance, any you know homeowners association, all these all these expenses that are real expenses, and it's still a great deal. Um, this is where I, I'm getting my my numbers for the rental numbers. You know, I, I'm going to have supporting data there. The idea here is to prevent present them with backups on your comps, backups on on your construction numbers. Um, backups on the condition of the property with video and pictures, and then finally, a financial overview of the entire project where you can say, look, this is, this is the construction that needs to be done, this is the purchase price, these are the real expenses, uh, soft costs and whatnot. Uh, if it's a flip, use the profit maximizer. You have a detailed breakdown of every part of the transaction. And you know now it's a no-brainer. When you say $50,000, how can they say that you're, they're not gonna make money? And at that point, they're going to be a lot more apt to pull the trigger faster and you know for more money. So those are some key tips. Take them as they are, implement them, and uh, you know uh, start start making more money on your wholesale deals and making it faster. <laughs> That's it for today's training. Uh, until next time, best of luck in your real estate investing.